Intel has released its newest, latest, and greatest, the 14900KS. This faster variant of the 14900K includes faster clocks, more power, and a higher price tag. But how much extra performance does Intel's newest chip bring, with this more than likely being the last Intel processor to bear the name Core? Is it a fitting swan song? Is this the upgrade you should be getting if you have an older Intel processor? And how does it compare to the latest and greatest from AMD? Quickly taking a look at our test system, and this is a CPU related test, which means that the motherboard and memory might be different between different CPU models. So check out the link in our description to our full review to see what the tech specs are for all the different CPUs tested. But for the 14th, 13th, and 12th generation Intel processors, we are using 32 gigabytes of DDR5-6000 memory, paired with a PNY RTX 4090 Accelerate and Windows 11 Professional. And moving over into the benchmarks, this video is gonna focus mostly on gaming performance. So if you are more interested in application performance, I would suggest going over to the full review on our website, where we do have the full breakdown of 47 different tests we ran on this processor. But getting back into the gaming benchmarks, and I like starting out with 4K on CPU tests, just as a reminder that if you are looking to game at 4K, you aren't gonna see much of a difference between any of the comparable CPUs. And that's just what we see here with the Core i9-14900KS being less than 1% faster than the Core i9-14900K and the Core i9-13900K. Moving down to the Core i9-12900K does bring the performance down a little bit more and is now 4% slower with the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D being 1.6% slower. Dropping the resolution to 1440p does separate these CPUs a little bit more. Though at this point, the gaming focused Ryzen 7 7800X3D does pull ahead from the 14900KS and is now 1.4% faster. The vanilla 14900K basically maintains its pace with the 14900KS and is now 0.6% slower, with the 13900K now being 1.7% slower. The Ryzen 9 7950X3D does have a decent showing and is 96.2% of a 14900KS, but the Core i9-12900K does start to lag behind and is now only delivering 89% of this newest chip's performance. Moving down to a more gamer-friendly 1080p does allow these new processors to stretch their legs, especially in certain key games, which does let the Ryzen 7 7800X3D pull even further ahead and is now 4.2% faster than the Core i9-14900KS. The 14900KS is now 1.2% faster than the vanilla 14900K. The Ryzen 9 7950X3D leapfrogs the Core i9-13900K and now delivers 98% of Intel's latest chip. The bad news for 12900K owners is that it continues to fall further down the charts, now being about 14% slower than the Core i9-14900KS. And all things considered, that's not too bad a spot to be in, delivering very similar performance to the Ryzen 9 7950X and more performance than the 5800X 3D. It also delivers pretty respectable 1% lows, being at 136.3 FPS on average across all the games we've tested. But if you are looking for more performance, the Core i9-14900KS does deliver a very respectable 162.9 FPS, only losing out to the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. 720p is not a resolution that pretty much anybody who's getting any of these CPUs is going to play at, but eventually the RTX 4090 will not be the fastest GPU around, and this is a good look at the performance you could get with a much faster GPU. And really the pecking order for Intel chips stays about the same with the Core i9-14900KS being about 1-3% to faster than its older counterparts, while the Ryzen 9 7950X3D flexes its muscles and is now a touch faster than Intel's latest and greatest. But if you do want the most performance, that's probably still going to be the 7800X3D. And if you are rocking a 12900K, it's still keeping pretty good company, but is noticeably slower. Though paired with a high power GPU that's still 195 FPS while gaming, compared to the 220 to 240 FPS from its newer competition. 
While the Intel Core i9-14900KS may not be the fastest CPU when it comes to gaming, the tables do turn when looking at application performance. The 14900KS is now the fastest card available, being about 3% faster than the vanilla 14900K. It is noticeably faster than the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, which is actually now slower than the non-3D variant, the 7950X, and is 30% faster than the 12900K. But seeing that inside this is still just a 14900K, how did the S model get the extra performance? Power, and a lot of it. The 14900K S uses 374 watts fully loaded at stock, which is almost 100 watts more than the vanilla 14900K. And this total can balloon to over 500 if you remove the power limits. Intel's 13th and 12th gen parts fall pretty much where you'd expect, though AMD is the big winner here with the 7950X 3D using only a fraction of the power of the 14900K S. And all that power has to go somewhere, and the 14900K S gets pretty warm when under full load, coming in at 103.5 degrees C. This is less than the 12900K, which uses a lot less power, with the vanilla 14900K looking downright cool in comparison to Intel's latest chip. Luckily, while gaming, you aren't going to be using all that power and so not generating all that heat, with the 14900K S generating a more reasonable 160 watts, that's still more than the 144 watts needed by the vanilla 14900K, and quite a bit more than the 56 watts needed for the 7950X 3D. The Intel Core i9-14900KS was never going to win a value award, being the fastest chip that Intel makes and the fastest processor for applications that is available doesn't come cheap. And at $690, it's surrounded by cards that also aren't very good deals either. The most comparable chip from AMD, the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, is $100 cheaper while being a bit slower in applications and about the same in gaming. The real value starts coming when you chop off the S and look at the 14900K and 13900K at $545 and $525 US dollars respectively. Both these chips run cooler, use less energy, and cost substantially less, while only being a few percentage points slower than the 14900K S. Even the 12900K with its decidedly slower performance is a better deal at $375. But most people shouldn't scroll to the top of the chart and get the most bang for the buck CPU available. Budget gamers should be looking at the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, while power users should probably be looking at the Core i9-14900K or the Ryzen 9 7950X in X 3D. But if you are looking for the very most performance that you can buy, or the most bragging rights, there's always the 14900K S.